So how would you like to build a weather app in 50 lines of code? So this is the weather app right here. Um, it is for the city of Islamabad right now. The temperature is 35 degrees or so outside. It is in fact clear skies and you get a little sun icon as well. And this is the code as promised uh, less than 50 lines, in fact 48 lines of code. And this is not just you know static text. This is actually live information that's being pulled from something called the weather service. And all of this magic is happening because of something called the weather kit which was just introduced by Apple uh, last week. Now, uh, in fact, if I just go here and refresh it, uh, you can see that the uh, display changes over here slightly. So it has just gone back to the API, pulled the fresh uh, temperature and displayed that. So it's all live, it's all working. It's a proper weather app in 50 lines of code. So let's talk about WeatherKit. It was introduced by Apple at WWDC last week. It has uh, APIs for all the usual Apple frameworks. It also has a REST API. So you, in fact, you can use it from your uh, web app, for example, as well. But if you are an Apple developer, then the process is absolutely dead simple. And the basic access of the API is included in your developer account. So you don't really have to create a new account or sign up to anything uh, to use it. You do have to configure your app properly. So let's just do that first. Um, go to your account. And when you go there, you'll see the usual certificates, identifiers, and profile section. Click on that and go to identifiers and create a new identifier for your app. Now, if you're an app developer for iOS, you already know how to do this. These are my old ones, by the way. Uh, so if you create a new one for the weather app, um, you will end up somewhere over here. Now, the bundle ID I've already selected, but look at the capabilities and app services tabs below, right? So in each of these, you'll have to do select weather kit. So if you go to the uh, capability section, this is the capability section, there's a lot of capabilities. Uh, up there that you can select from and uh, the one that I've selected is weather kit and also go to the app services and again select weather kit so by doing these one capability and one app service in the cloud your app is now configured to use weather kit right and uh, then you just have to do one last thing and that's in Xcode itself so that's familiar so in Xcode go to your uh, the properties of your uh, of your project and in the signing and capability section, you have to click on the capability. So click this and then from the resulting pop-up, select weather kit and it'll start showing up. Again, I've already done that. And of course your bundle identifier will be the same as the one that you have done over here. But then again, as an iOS developer, you will already know how to do that because that's always the case. The only new thing is that you have to select the capability and the app service and then select it over here as well as the capability with the next code. So with that, your app is now weather kit capable. Now, when you do it the first Time, by the way because this is getting configured in the cloud it can take up to half an hour for this thing to get configured uh, but that's just an initial setup after that you can just you know hit the api and pull the weather information as often as you like and uh, that's it that's the setup and now let's jump into the code so when you start a new swift ui project you get a skeleton app that looks like this so let's just start over here it has a basic content view and not much else right so the first thing to do is to add the apis that we will be using so let's just paste them in you're going to use something called code location because you want the location of the city for which you want the weather and of course we will use the weather kit so first we need a way to get the location and to do that within the content view let's just paste this in and i'll explain it uh, basically because we have the uh, code location um, import over here we can define a variable called location you can call it anything of course but it has to be of the type cl location and this has two members latitude and longitude and they both have initial values of float literal of these values now the values for this are for the city for which i'm interested in right now which is islamabad but of course you can have any place on earth and you can sort of look up your lat and log on a map on google maps apple maps whatever you like next we need a place to actually store the weather and that has to be a state variable so let's put that in uh, it's a variable called weather. Again, you can call it whatever you like, but it has to be of the type weather. And it is of this type because of the availability of the weather kit. And because it is a state variable, every time it changes, the display will change, which is exactly what you want. Next, get the function. Let's get the function which will actually fetch the weather from the weather API. So I'm just gonna paste that in here and then explain it to you. So this function over here, this thing that I've just pasted in. It is called get weather again, it can be any name, but basically it has to be an asynchronous function because this is an asynchronous uh, call. And within that we set up a task and inside a do catch loop. So this is the loop, so this is the do part, this is the catch part. The catch part is fairly basic at this point, it'll just print out the error. Of course you can add more error handling uh, for a proper app, but this is a demo. And within the do part, um, we're gonna set weather to 
something but it's going to go through a task because we, we want it uh, again as an asynchronous uh, fashion uh, call and the task is going to be to call the weather service which is available to us because of the weather kit and within that dot shared dot weather for self location and this location is the location that we have just set over here right so what it'll do is it'll call the weather kit for the weather for the location this and it is inside a try block because it can throw an error which will go here and it is within an await block because it is an asynchronous call. So whenever this function gets called, then the weather will become available. Of course, the display has not changed yet and that's because we have not done anything within the view so far. So let's do that next. So let's just get rid of this V stack over here because we don't need it. As soon as I do that, I will get an error because it requires a view to be there. And we'll just fix that in a minute. I'm just gonna paste this in the entire code and then go over it line by line, right? So if I, as soon as I paste it in, the uh, the refreshed uh, view, yeah, there you go. It's already working and the app is in fact complete, but let's actually now go through this. So basically what's happening over here? Well, we have an if else block to begin with. And in the if block, we say let weather is equal to weather. Now this weather over here, this one, is the state variable. So whenever that changes, this whole display will get updated. We are storing it in a local variable also called weather. Again, it can be called anything you like within this view because we want to refer to the properties of this within this view, all right? Uh, but it's in an if let block because if the API fails or it's taking some time, then it'll fall into the else <clears throat> because when the app is first run, uh, the weather uh, will not contain anything, right? It'll be blank until the get weather function is called. And so it'll fall through to the else and the else gives us a prog progress view, which is not visible because the API fetches it very quickly so you can't see it. But if it takes longer, then it'll show you sort of a waiting taskbar. And, but importantly, the progress view can assign a task which is to await get weather. And this get weather function is the one that we just defined. So here's the sequence. The, the app comes up, it tries the if let statement, finds out that there's nothing in weather, falls through to the else. The else through this task calls get weather, which is right over here, and which calls us the, uh, the asynchronously calls the weather service, gets the weather and populates the state variable over here. As soon as this state variable gets populated, now the if part becomes active and this vStack gets displayed. And this is what we are seeing over here. Now the vStack is fairly standard. If you are used to uh, Swift UI coding, it has a text called Islamabad. This is hard coded, of course, because this has to do with the coordinates. You can, of course, call it anything you like. If you have different coordinates here, then feel free to do that. And of course, in a proper app, you'll have a more dynamic system, but this is just for, uh, for, for demo. Uh, it has a large title font, it has a padding, foreground color of blue. You can have any color you like, naturally. Um, then the next line is showing you the weather. This line over here is showing us the main temperature. So I'll just show you this step by step. So it's the weather, which is the variable over here. But then within that, we have the current weather, the temperature and the description, which is what this is. And then the next line shows current weather condition. And the condition, of course, is clear. And then the next line shows an image, which is again coming from weather, but this time current weather dot symbol name. And the symbol in this case is the sun. So this symbol is also provided by the weather API. So you don't have to do anything. I mean, the whole thing just works. Let me just dig into this uh, weather um, a little bit more because that's the important bit. So I'm just gonna copy paste this over here. Let's just take this line over here. Paste it back up here and we're gonna play with it a little bit. And because I pasted it back here, you can see that the condition is showing here. So this is coming from this line, but now let's just see what else is available, right? So in weather.currentweather, I have for right now gone for the condition dot description, but what else could I do? So let's just see. So I just go dot here and it shows you. So you can see the visibility. If I do that dot description, then it shows me the visibility in meters, right? And by the way, the centigrades and the meters are because of my locale settings. If you run it sort of in a place where you have Fahrenheit and, and miles, for example, then the appropriate units will show up automatically. You don't have to do anything. <clears throat> All right, so that's visibility. What else can we do? We can also get the pressure dot description and you get the pressure in millibars, I think. There we go. And again, every time this refreshes, it's a live API call. Just remember that, right? So this is actual live data. Um, apparent temperature, dew point, condition, I've just shown you, and, uh, and so on and so forth. Cloud cover, how much is the cloud cover dot description? I haven't even tried this before, but I suppose it'll be a percentage. And yeah, so it's only 12% cloud cover right now, 0.12. Of course, I could format it properly and so on and so forth. Uh, now, all of this is coming from weather dot current weather, but of course, you also need forecasts, right? So let's just go back here and say weather dot daily forecast. You can get a daily forecast. You can also get an hourly and a minute by minute forecast. So it's a very comprehensive API. Let's just go to daily forecast and 
we'll go to the first element of this four uh, because this is an array and then for first we have the high temperature and so this is showing me uh, sorry dot description as usual and now this is showing me the high temperature forecast for tomorrow right so it's going to be high of 37 degrees and if i just copy paste this down here uh, and i can also get the low temperature so this is the forecast for tomorrow the low of 28 and a high of 37 degrees and this is the first element of the array but of course let's just actually do it with subscripts so this will still work if i go with zero but of course now i can also go day by day so i can go to one and that's the next day after that and if i go to two then it's the next day after that if i go to three it's the next day after that and so in a real application of course you would you could you could show this as a graph or you could show this as a table whatever it is but basically you're getting a 10-day forecast for the weather uh, in a couple of lines of code so that's basically the weather kit api it's very powerful and as you can see, it can uh, you know give you all kinds of forecasts, all kinds of information, and it's just so compact. I mean, if you are within this, we are still we've added a few extra things here. We're still within a few lines of code over here, um, and there you go. Now you can just make your own weather app anytime you like. Thanks to Apple.